Well, we received quite an amazing response to our first segment on uh, Chronically Late. As a matter of fact, I couldn't believe the number of people, although maybe I shouldn't say couldn't believe. Um, let me just put it this way. The amount of emails that people sent in saying that there's no way um, that the, the points I was making could be valid for them personally, like they weren't narcissists, um, they weren't control freaks, and they weren't searching for attention, which is what the three keys we talked about on part one of this. Well, it was amazing. Within about a week or two after that was posted, these same people, bless their hearts for being so open-minded and looking so deeply, came back and said, you know, I was talking to some friends of mine and they agreed that I was A, B, or C of the three points that we mentioned on uh, Chronically Late Part 1. Hi, I'm David Essel. You know, a lot of these things that we talk about here on these YouTube videos are very difficult for us to see in ourselves. It's very hard to see when we're attention-seeking missiles of human beings. You know, it's very hard to see that we're narcissistic in nature, that the base root of some of our problems in life are simply caused by ourselves, is that we want things to be done our way, and we want it to be done the way we think they should be done, you know, which is some of the key points of being narcissistic in itself. But I want to talk about today about a couple other things, other points that we need to discuss when we look at people that are chronically late. And by the response to our video one, this is a huge issue. And it is around the world, in our country, absolutely it's a huge issue that there are many, many, many well-intended people that are chronically late. And the well-intention means nothing here. If we don't get to the base cause of why we are late, then nothing that we do regarding your intention work or gratitude work or written work will ever work. As a matter of fact, um, 20-something years ago when I started this and people said, I just need more time management skills, I looked at them and said it has nothing to do with time management. And it really doesn't. And isn't that shocking? In the world of people that are being chronically late, we'd think that if they just were more organized, if they knew better time management skills, but it's ludicrous to think that that'll change anything. It won't. Because most of the people that I've worked with who have chronic lateness as an issue in their relationships, with their work, or with their home life, um, they are well aware of what it means to set schedules. They've gone through elementary school. They've gone through high school. Many have gone through college. And to get through elementary school and, and, and high school and college, you have to understand um, how to use an alarm clock. You know, so I'm not being condescending here. You have to understand about showing up on time when you make an appointment with someone. You have to understand about showing up to class and all those type of things. Now, some people, of course, just barely get through all those years. But most of us, even if we still struggle with being chronically late in adulthood, you found a way to, to be on time in elementary school, in high school, and in college. You know, and So we say, okay, it's not time management. As a matter of fact, most of the people that I've worked with who are chronically late and have issues with it, they have all the time management books in the world. They have all the planners. They have everything. The latest iPhone apps for time management, <laughs> for God's sake. And it doesn't work. Why? Because it's, that's all surface work. That's all surface. It has nothing to do with the core. So what are some other reasons besides the three that we talked about on the first one? And if you haven't watched it, please watch the, the first video that we did on Chronically Late right here on YouTube underneath my, my, um, my, my uh, events here. Super Slow Down is the channel name. Super Slow Down. But anyway, we'll go on to now this, the, a couple of other ones that we want to look at. Um, one, which is really, really important when it comes to being uh, an example of people that are chronically running late, is that they're people pleasers. They're afraid to say no. They're unbelievably afraid of rejection. And so they'll say yes to all these different things on their daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. And because of their overcommitment to people, but the base fear is I'll be rejected if I say no. I don't like conflict. A lot of people that are chronically late hate conflict. So instead of being in conflict with their boss, uh, their coworker, their lover, their children, their mother, father, whoever it might be, their neighbor, instead of going into conflict and saying no and having someone upset with them, they have a tendency to say yes too many times. They're people pleasers. They really want to be able to do everything. That never works. Obviously, for someone who's chronically late, if you're sitting here watching this and you're going, you know, I do have a tendency to say yes to a lot of people, that could be one of your core issues. 
The other core issue that we see a lot, um, and this is an important one as well, is that there are adrenaline junkies, people that are chronically late. They really love the adrenaline rush of trying to, now this is all subconscious, okay? None of these things that I'm talking about is conscious decisions for the most part, but they just love the adrenaline rush. They love chaos in their lives. They love to have confusion in their lives. And as long as there's confusion, they feel worthwhile. That's their identity. Their identity is someone, if we talk about the people pleaser, their identity is a people pleaser. Everyone loves them because they do everything for everyone in the world. Or number two, the identity is, is that, that chaos is their identity. Confusion is their identity. Um, adrenaline rushing and rushing and rushing is their identity. See, when you can be really frenetic in the world, oftentimes you get people going, oh my gosh, you've got so much on your plate, and you go, yeah, I know, and that fuels the process. Or as you're running around the house trying to get things organized to get ready to go to work, and then you remember that there was something that you had to do last night on the computer that you forgot to, so you go back and make up for that, and then you end up being late for your appointment, or you're late for work, or you're late picking up the kids, or whatever it might be, that you can say, well, you wouldn't believe how much I have going on. I mean, my life is absolutely crazy. See, and the base cause of that is this identity that that is who we are. Some people that want to be successful in life think that that's a great identity of successful people. And so some people who are um, maybe single parents or maybe they're parents within uh, a traditional relationship is that they, if they can say to their partner, oh my God, you wouldn't believe my day, my dad had to do this, I had to do that, I had to do that. That's their identity. So if we can get to the core of the identity and say it's not healthy being that frenetic, chaos, adrenaline-driven junkie, it's not healthy, so let's remove that identity, or it's not healthy being a people pleaser, so let's remove that identity, it sounds good you as you watch me talk about this, but the problem is, is that when we remove a huge identity that someone may have had for 10 or 15 or 20 years, or when we talk about the identities that we discussed on, on the first Chronically Late video that I did, is that all of a sudden there's a hole there. Like, who am I without this control or without this attention or without this people-pleasing skill or without this adrenaline? Who am I? And so in my work, what I help people do is remove that identity that is not serving them that creates this chronic lateness. And we have to supplant a new identity that takes a while to get used to. Some people, if you really are done with the craziness of being late, some people can heal from this in like a week. Seriously. Most people can take a couple months because it's been met with them for a long time. If you know anyone who's chronically late, maybe you're watching this because you are, take these words to heart. If we don't remove the core identity that is not serving us, the lateness will never ever change. I don't care if you sit down with Stephen Covey, one of the greatest organizers of this world, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter who you hire to organize yourself. It's not about organization. Never has been, never will be. Share this video with as many of your friends and family members that might suffer from this as you can because the ripple effect from chronic lateness affects everyone in our life in a negative way, especially us. If I can help you, contact me at talkdavid.com, talkdavid.com. Let me know if you need some help. We'll do some work together and we can really, really get to the root cause, take it out, fill you in with a new identity. There'll be so much calmer. And don't forget to sign up for our right here on Super Slowdown um, YouTube so that every video we put out goes into your own account, okay? Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.